Hi guys, welcome back. My name's Martina and I'm a baby feeding specialist. So I've been working with tongue ties for almost 16 years now and within that time what struck me is the stress that parents go through when they're just trying to get their babies diagnosed and how important it is just to get the right information at the right time. And with that in mind, I'd really like to talk about tongue ties today. So, what is a tongue tie? Ankylogracia, most commonly known as tongue tie. And all that is, is a piece of skin that is attached to your tongue and to the floor of the mouth. This can sometimes restrict tongue movement. So, there are three types of tongue tie. So our first type is called an anterior. Now I like to call this one a blind man's tongue tie because quite frankly it's so obvious that even a blind man can see it. So this one is at the tip of the tongue to the floor of the mouth. This one we don't panic so much about because actually they can be very long and stretchy so the baby can actually go Sometimes baby pokes out their tongue and you can see it being pulled back, almost like a strawberry shape. So the important moves for a tongue tie is that your baby can go, stretch out their tongue. And the other one is the peristaltic movement, which we call the peristaltic wave. So we also want your baby ideally to be able to go. These are important movements. And the reason is that when your baby goes, they can push their tongue out to get a nice latch to the breast. This is really important. So our second one is called posterior. Now this one is a little bit more difficult because when the baby sticks their tongue out, they often more do. And the reason why is because it's shorter. It can present like it's a short tongue, but actually Posterior means it's towards the back, so you have to look harder to see that. And again, the important moves are there. But with these ones, often you get more of a movement. So if they don't come past the lips, it is well, it can be harder to latch on. And also, sometimes what you see is the lack of cupping. So sometimes the tongue is more flat when we need it to cup, because again, we need it to move forward. So sometimes we'll practice babies can still latch on, but these are the movements we're going to look for. So the third type, this is called submucosal. Now this one is probably the most difficult one to diagnose because unfortunately all of the tongue tie is underneath the tongue itself. So we can't see it. If we can't see it, we can't cut it because there is nothing there to cut. Now this one's difficult because the baby can smell the milk. They know they want it, but they're head butting like a demented woodpecker because they're so frustrated trying to latch on, but they're not quite getting there. So unfortunately, this one's gonna take time and patience. Your baby's gonna grow, their mouth will grow, their tongue will grow, and often that can resolve the issue itself when the baby grows. But sadly, not a lot we can do about this one. So it's also worth mentioning that tongue ties can be hereditary in boys. So just for fun, have a look at other children in the family, your partner, uh, the men folk, basically. Even as a little thing, stick out your tongue, have a look in the mirror and see if you've got one because girls can get them too. Issues are things like nipple cripple, very sore nipples, an unsettled baby at the breast. Also weight loss or constant feeding. And although they're constantly feeding, they're still losing weight. The other thing you might have is severe wind and also baby spitting up after the feeds or even during the feeds. Now, you might be able to tick off one or two of these things or maybe all. In either case, what you need to do is seek help. Don't concentrate on the tongue tie itself because some of these issues could actually be down to just a poor latch. And if you get help, we may resolve all of these issues. So remember, if it's not broken, 
don't try to fix it. So you've contacted somebody and hopefully they've worked on the attachment and positioning of your baby. And actually now you've resolved all them issues. That's fantastic. Just concentrate on the breast feeding and forget about the tongue tie. For those of you that have had the help and actually none of it has actually helped and these issues are still a problem. So we're going to talk to you about having a procedure, a frenulotomy to release your baby's tongue to help them feed. So you're gonna have a frenulotomy done. This is what they call the procedure when they release the tongue. It's a relatively quick and easy procedure to have done. They're not going to give any pain relief because actually it's not required. It takes about 30 seconds once you've gotten over all the chatting about what they're going to do and why, and you've understood everything. So they're going to take the baby, wrap the baby up very carefully. Somebody's going to hold your baby nice and still. The practitioner is going to put their fingers into the mouth, elevate the tongue, give a quick snip. Then they're going to run their fingers along the membranes to break down any tongue tie that's left and make sure it's nicely done. After that, they're going to insert some gauze underneath the tongue to compress. The reason they do this is because sometimes you can get a small bleed. Now don't panic because the bleed itself is about five P coins worth of blood. Sometimes if the baby's really upset, and they elevate their tongue, it can be more, but they just keep it nicely compressed until it stops. It's not a big deal, I promise. And then what's going to happen is they're going to bring the baby back to you. Unwrap baby, you should have your top off, thinking happy thoughts, letting that oxytocin run through so that your milk and you are ready to latch that baby on. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, depending on what kind of tongue tie your baby had, they're gonna feed. You may require, require more assistance because remember, it's gonna take practice for you to get confident and the baby to get confident. So it's about practice. And after that, I'm gonna explain aftercare. So you've had your friendly lots of me down. So you're left with a small diamond shape now underneath the baby's tongue. That's going to heal. It's going to change colours into a white or a yellow shape that looks like an ulcer, but it doesn't hurt like an ulcer. The other thing that they would have told you to look out for is any signs of infection. So that will be redness and oozing. If that happens, either go back to your practitioner or your GP. The other things that they should have said is maybe put some gloves or socks onto the baby's hands to keep their hands out of the mouth so that their sharp nails doesn't slightly nick that wound and start a bleed. But don't panic if that does happen. All you have to do is put the baby back onto the breast, it compresses the tongue. The other thing they should have told you to be doing is breastfeed every two to three hours and practice because the more you practice and get the latch perfect, even if it hurts a little bit after say 30 seconds, take the baby off, reposition, make sure the mouth is big and then put them back on. But the more you practice, the more we're going to stretch that tongue out to help its healing. So breastfeed, breastfeed, breastfeed. And be patient with yourself and the baby. Just remember as well that this procedure isn't a magic wand, so you are going to have to work at it. So as always, guys, just remember I'm not your healthcare provider. These videos are for information only. If you do need help with this subject, then please do reach out to your healthcare provider. And remember, every baby's an individual. So we've come to the end of yet another video. I hope you found it informative. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like the content. And if you want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe. We will be releasing more stuff, which I hope you guys find interesting. So hopefully we'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching. See you again.